Are all babies really born with blue eyes? It's one of those things that everyone seems to say. Oh, my niece or my nephew, they all had blue eyes, but it'll change. Here's the thing, that's just not true for most babies around the world. I remember when my old children were born, they had these beautiful, striking, very light gray eyes, and it was lovely and surprising, but did it mean they would keep those eyes forever? Not at all. Their eye color changed over time, just like many babies do, but not necessarily to blue, and not in the same way for every child. So today, I want to clear up this widespread myth and walk you through what actually happens with infant eye color. We're going to talk about the real science behind why babies' eyes look the way they do at birth, how and why that color changes, what the genetics tells us, including a paint mixing analogy that will help make sense of the complexity, and what actual large studies of babies' eye color at birth have found. We'll also talk about what you can expect when your baby's eye color starts to stabilize, and more importantly, when any changes might be a reason to see an eye doctor. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rupa Wong. I'm a board certified pediatric ophthalmologist and mom of three. And in my practice, I get questions about baby's eye color all the time. Why it's changing, when it will stop changing, whether it will stay blue, turn brown, or something else. And my goal with this video is to give you clear, evidence-based answers that you can trust while making sure you really understand what's going on in your child's eyes. So we're gonna start by busting this very common myth. All babies are born with blue eyes. This idea is everywhere, in parenting books, on social media, from grandparents. But the reality is it simply isn't universal. The belief actually comes from largely observing babies of European ancestry where lighter eye colors are more common at birth. Across the world, most babies are not born with blue eyes. In fact, the majority of babies around the world are born with brown eyes. This includes babies with African, East Asian, South Asian ancestry, and many others. So it's important to remember what what seems normal in one culture or family might not be true everywhere. So when someone says all babies have blue eyes, it's actually only describing a subset of the world's population. Why do so many babies then, especially those of European ancestry, appear to have blue or gray eyes at birth? The answer is all about melanin. Melanin is the pigment that gives color to our eyes, our skin, and hair. And at birth, many babies' irises contain very little melanin. This lack of pigment means that light entering the eye scatters in shorter blue wavelength. This is called the Rayleigh phenomenon, or Rayleigh scattering. And it's the exact same reason that the sky appears blue. So it's not that the babies are born with blue pigment in their eyes. Instead, their eyes look blue or gray because of the physics of how light scatters in an iris, and that's when it has very little melanin. So as babies grow, their melanocytes, the cells responsible for producing melanin, become more active, and melanin production ramps up. As that pigment accumulates in the iris, the color deepens and darkens to the baby's genetically determined eye color. So it changes. But this process of melanin accumulation, it doesn't happen instantly. It typically unfolds over the first months to years of life. So for most babies, the most dramatic changes occur in the first six to 12 months. By around 12 to 18 months of age, the eye color is usually fairly stable. But it's also normal for subtle changes to continue all the way up until age three. So parents often ask me, when will my baby's eye color stop changing? And the honest answer is expect most of the change in the first year, but don't be surprised if you notice small shifts for another year or two after that. This is a normal, healthy developmental process, all driven by the gradual genetic programmed increase in melanin in the iris. Now, let's dig into the genetics because this is where people often think it's simpler than it really is. You might have seen those old school eye charts that say brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes or that there's a recessive and a dominant gene for eye color and that's it. And that model is really extremely oversimplified. Eye color is actually a polygenic trait. That means it's controlled by many different genes working together, not just one or two. In fact, up to 16 genes can control eye color. The two most important genes are located on chromosome 15, OCA2 and HERC2. OCA2 helps produce the melanin in the iris, while HERC2 includes a regulatory region that controls how much OCA2 is expressed. So this specific variant of the HERC2 gene can have a big influence on whether someone ends up with a high or low melanin in their iris, which in turn influences whether their eyes look light or dark. That's just the beginning though, because as I mentioned, there's a lot of different genes like TIR1 and SLC2484. They're all about melanin production, the type of melanin produced, and how it's packaged in the eye. 
And this is where I really like to use the paint mixing analogy with parents. Think of each of these jeans as adding a specific color to your palette. You don't have just one blue paint and one brown paint. Instead, you have many different pigments and you're blending them all together. The final eye color you see is the result of all of those shades mixed on the palette. So this is why eye color is not just brown or blue. It exists on a spectrum from light blue and gray to green, hazel and deep brown. And there's all different variations within each of those colors. So it explains why you can't predict a baby's exact eye color with a simple dominant versus recessive chart. Genetics is beautifully complex with many genes interacting in subtle ways to produce each person's unique shade. So let's move then from the theory to the data. What do we actually see when we look at baby's eye color at birth in real world studies? So one of the best sources is the Stanford Newborn Eye Screening Test or NEST study. This was a prospective study, meaning they followed all of these babies from birth, 192 full term newborn in very diverse US population. And here's what they found. They found that 63% of the babies had brown eyes at birth. About 21% had blue eyes, around 6% had green or hazel eyes, and almost 10% were indeterminate, and less than 1% had partial heterochromia. This is really important because it directly challenges the myth that all babies start out with blue eyes, because they didn't. It also reflects the ethnic diversity of the population studies. So for example, babies of European ancestry were more likely to have blue or gray eyes at birth, but even then, many of the eyes darkened over time. Meanwhile, babies of African, East Asian, and South Asian ancestry over overwhelmingly had brown eyes at birth that typically started brown and then stayed brown. So eye color at birth is not a one size fits all. It's shaped by genetics, ancestry, and the beautiful complexity of human variation. When exactly does the eye color change happen? Most of the eye color change happens in the first six to 12 months. By 12 to 18 months, the majority of babies have their permanent eye color. However, subtle changes can continue up to around age three, and even the Stanford Nest study showed age six. So that's why I tell parents, don't be surprised if those beautiful gray or blue eyes deepen or darken into a beautiful green or beautiful hazel or beautiful brown over the first year or two. It's normal, it's healthy, and it's genetically programmed. However, there are some reasons and times when an eye color change can be a sign that should prompt a visit to your pediatrician or your pediatric ophthalmologist. That's if you see a white or very dull red reflex in photos, very light irises that don't darken at all after 12 to 18 months, that could indicate albinism. And eyes with markedly different colors, heterochromia, one eye different than the other, that can develop later. Cloudy or enlarged corneas or an abnormal pupil, eye crossing, eyes don't, don't fix or follow. These might be signs that your child might have a serious problem. So they're a reason to get checked. So there are also some rare but very important conditions that you should know about. Albinism, like I mentioned before, results in very light eyes, hair, and skin. It's often associated with reduced vision and nystagmus, though there are even just ocular albinism where it just affects the eyes. There's heterochromia, where the eyes are different colors or have color variations in one iris. That can be completely normal, but it also can be a sign of certain syndromes or prior inflammation or trauma. So these conditions are different from the normal eye color changes that most babies go through in infancy. So to recap, not all babies are born with blue eyes. That's a myth based on a partial view of the world. Many babies, especially those of European ancestry, may have blue or gray eyes at birth due to low melanin and light scattering. But across the world and globally, most babies are born with brown eyes and they stay brown. Eye color changes over time as melanin production increases, usually stabilizing by 12 to 18 months, with some small changes continuing up until age three. And all of this is driven by genetics. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content on children's eye health, and leave any questions you have in the comments below. Did your baby's eye color change? Did your eye color change from birth until what you've got now? I love hearing these stories, and I know others do too. Thanks so much for watching, and Dr. Rupa, and I'll see you next time.